Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over my favorites and fails for the month of February. I am not going to ramble, I'm just going to jump straight in. And I'm going to start off with something that I have been talking about non-stop. And I kind of did a thing and kind of purchased another one. <laughs> the Glow Lust Radiant Luminizer Auric by Samantha Ravendahl. I now have three shades. I think I'm going to give away Morganite, but these two I'm going to keep. The only reason why I got the next shade, this one, Pirate, Py it's not Pyrite, Pyrite, I think that's right. That is what I'm wearing right now is because I wanted one that was truly like really close to my skin tone and would just give a little bit of reflection. And that is what this does for me. So I think these are the two that I want to keep and I'm going to gift the Morganite one to someone. These are just so gorgeous. I love the way it looks on my skin. I love the lip from within and the actual skin texture. This does not give me any added texture like a regular luminizer would. The way it sits on top of powder and foundation is absolutely immaculate. I am in love with them. I do like it also mixed in with my foundation. I don't love it underneath foundation, but if you want to see like a whole update on these, just check out my last updates. But I got to tell you, I can't get enough. Obviously, I have three now and I don't need three. I think that Selenite gives me a little bit more glow, still a little bit less obvious than Morganite on my skin, and then the Pyrite is just exactly what I was looking for. I just love them. I love them so, 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 so much. Another highlight that I think is absolutely stunning. I wish that it was in the packaging that the first one was released in. It is from Pat McGrath. It's her new highlighter in Divine Rose. The texture of this is so beautiful and the color, everything is stunning. This is what the packaging looks like. Again, it's called Divine Rose and it's the Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlight. This has that gelée type of texture and it's super, super smooth. I actually used Selenite and then put this on top of it and it was like, <gasps> Ooh, to the absolute most perfection that you could possibly get. If you have this and one of the Glow Lusts, try it out, just top it with it. And I'm telling you, it is so beautiful. But let me show you, can you guys see that shift? The gold, the coral, and like that pink. Oh, it's so pretty. This is what it looks like. Oh, I love the texture of it. The first one, I don't remember the name of it. I call it the hockey puck or the paperweight because it is so heavy. I love the packaging on it, but that one didn't work for me. This one does. I think it is so pretty. It's so, so pretty. And I love the texture of it. Oh, so good. This is one of the more intense highlights that I can actually wear without feeling like it's just too much because the color kind of goes and blends into my blush, but then the reflection of it is just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's gorgeous. A powder I have been loving. It's from a brand new brand, L-Y-S. I have to think about this before I say it because it just wants to come out as YSL. And I'm like, no, Mel. L-Y-S Beauty, and this is a new brand at Sephora, black owned and clean, and it's a really, really good brand. So I had a little bit of an issue with my pores when I was testing out the foundation and the powder, but I noticed that my under eye looked absolutely amazing. However, I got the wrong shade. This is the correct shade, and it is just translucent, but it's called Resilience. I love this. So I can confirm that it is the foundation that was going into my pores and not the powder. I have this on today and it looks so, so, so good. I'm going to be talking about these brushes. So let me just um, use one of these to put a little bit more on. But I love the way this blurs out right underneath my eyes and blurs the pore area. I like to take it right around the edges of the Auric Glow Lust because I can get a little bit of a line of like demarcation where the highlight meets with the skin if I don't get it blended perfectly, but this powder and just like a little bit 
right around the edges makes everything super, super smooth. So let me segue from this absolutely gorgeous powder that looks amazing underneath my eyes and amazing on my pores to these new brushes. Let me take it out of the reference box. <laughs> these are the new Yano series. I believe that's how you say it from Beautylish. And no, these were not sent to me. I know you guys know that I get PR from Beautylish, but I bought these beauties and I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you know, I'm just letting you know. Anywho, there's the face brush set and then this set. And I'm almost tempted to buy the face brush set just because of how much I like these, but I'm just like, I've gotten so many new brushes and then I just did a declutter. So I'm like, mm, John, I don't know. I'm like, I'm really tempted to get them. I'm really tempted to get them, but I can never have enough eye brushes. Anywho, this one right here is my absolute favorite from the bunch. It is the number eight and these have lacquered maple wood handles. All of the bristles are natural hair. This is the only one that has a combo but it's a combo of natural hair. It has Sekaho goat and gray squirrel. The rest of these are just gray squirrel and they are cruelty free. This one, because of that blend, it has just a little bit more of a stiff, not stiff, but a little bit more stiffness than these do. And I'm able to get a really nice blend out of my shadow. So I wouldn't call these workhorse brushes, except for this one. This is like in between workhorse and soft if that makes any sense at all. But all of these, because they are uncut bristles and because of the softness of the type of hair, these are great for people that do not wanna have tugging on their eyes or you know, applying like I did using this right underneath the eyes. You can use it for highlight or whatever. This one right here is the number six. I love this little pencil brush as well, the number one. I use these today to do my eye look as well as the powder underneath my eyes. And then this one is the number seven. I actually use this. Do you see, look at the movement of this brush. Do you see how soft? So this I use to highlight my brow arch and they're just gorgeous. I wouldn't suggest these to somebody who, who wants more of a workhorse type of brush. I would suggest these to somebody who looks for something softer, something that's not gonna move around the lid too much, or this one right here, you can buy them individually, which is really, really nice. So I'll probably buy a few more of these because this is my favorite favorite of the line, and then this is my second favorite. So if you're somebody who wants to have a little bit more oomph behind a brush, I would suggest this. But if you're overall, you like softer brushes in general, this set is absolutely gorgeous. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is they're they're pretty lightweight. I would like to have just a little bit more weight to them, but that's me being nitpicky. And I do like the ends, how they're kind of like, they have that angle to them because otherwise I'm gonna get these confused with Wayne Goss. They are black and they have the white lettering. I'm gonna be reaching in there and thinking it's a Wayne Goss brush. <laughs> Blushes. I have a new one and something that I've had in my collection but the new one made me think of it to bring it back out and start using it again. Again, L-Y-S, oh my gosh, this is the perfect cream blush. I mean, I have to have more colors as soon as they come back into stock. <laughs> but I had to test them out first to make sure I liked it, to make sure it didn't break me out, and to make sure it lasts on my skin, and it does. It lasts all day. It's very skin-like, and it goes right on top of my finished face. So on top of my foundation that is set with my powder, I have my bronzer on and I just stamp this on. This is the shade Kindness and this is called the Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush. It's just so easy to work with and I love this shade. Now because I was loving on this so much, it made me think to grab for this. This is from Patrick Ta. It's the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. This is the one She's So LA. I have been grabbing for the cream in here and I really love to mix it with this. So what I have on right now are these two mixed. I literally just take the brush and go back and forth in between the two. So I take this one and this cream right here and that is how I got the color. So it's not as coral, but it's not as deeply bronzed as this. It just so, so good, it is so good. I'm just really excited about cream products and all the new stuff coming out and uh, I'm, I'm feeling it, I am feeling it. All right, moving along, let's talk about 
nail polish because why not? I recently spent hours, I mean hours, <laughs> trying to get off my acrylic nails and I will be putting them back on. But um, yeah, I just wanted to give my nails a break plus ice storm and you know, all the stuff going on. You guys know what I mean? So I decided to take them off. It took me so long. I mean so long. I don't think it's ever taken me that long before. I gave up and went to bed with this one like half still on. <laughs> but anywho, I've had these for quite a while and I've meant to talk about them, but I keep forgetting because I've been wearing them on my toes. Well, these were sent to me, oh my gosh, it could be like nine months ago. I know I've worn this and have this in my description box before, incognito. But this one, you guys have been asking and asking and asking. I've had this on my hands for about a week. I wanna say about a week now. I haven't touched them up. I've got a maybe a tiny bit of chipping, but my nails bend. And I mean, when I say bend, I mean, yeah, you touch them and they'll just, yeah, whatever. I'm not the best deciding factor as to whether or not a nail polish will last, but I will tell you that I do not have a top coat on this and I barely, I have a tiny little chip on the tip of this nail. And I think that might actually be it. And I've had it on for a week. And again, no top coat at all. This is having an aerial moment. It's so pretty. It is so, so pretty. And then this one, I love this nude. This is Incognito. The brand is called By CS, but that stands for By, hold on, I need my phone. That stands for By Cindy Societal. Yeah, they're cruelty-free vegan nail polishes. So I thought that was pretty cool. And again, they were sent to me, but it was just so long ago. But I love these. They are very, very good. And I love the color choices, especially this one. There's just something really special about it. It's so pretty. Skincare. I talked about this in my, when I was trying to fix my moisture barrier, and I gotta tell you, it is night and day the difference in my skin over the last couple of weeks. And this has definitely, definitely been playing a huge part in it. This is the Barrier Serum from Even Prime. I've already ordered two backups because I use two pumps in the morning and two pumps at night. I've got my humidifier going at night and I really feel like this is helping everything penetrate my skin a little deeper, draw in the moisture. It doesn't break me out. It's very lightweight. I'm absolutely obsessed with this. This is a new go-to for me. I mean, I have put down my La Mer Serum. When did you think I would ever say that? This, I don't know what it is. I don't know how it works, but I mean, I don't even really feel it on my skin. It's not something that you put on and you're like, oh, I feel like I don't need to put anything on. It's, it's very, very, very lightweight and watery, but it definitely helps. My skin is so much better. Now the most fun part. Palette. <laughs> so the very first favorite I have to give to Kaleidos and Angelica Angie. I love, love, love this palette. This is the Club Nebula palette. I have not been inspired a lot. I mean, I love makeup. I, I mean, I love the look that I have on right now. I love just putting on natural makeup as well, but I haven't been truly inspired I feel like in a little while and this palette it I had so much fun using it and I had so much fun playing and creating a little bit more of an artistic look with it and they do not disappoint these shades are so stunning I love all the different textures in here you've got mattes you have metallics and then some of these shades are they're metallic but kind of glittery as well so they will go on a little bit more sheer or you can pack them on for a little bit more opacity. But I just, I love the color selection. It just really inspired me to play. And I appreciated that. I needed that inspiration. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It truly speaks to Angie. This palette is her in a nutshell. And if you have not checked out her channel, make sure you do. She is absolutely incredible, especially if you like really colorful eye looks. She's the queen. All right, this one, I didn't expect this to be a favorite, but my 
favorite non like colorful eye look. It still has a little bit of color in it, but this eye look does some things for me. I'm just gonna insert a still from my video instead of a picture where I have my mascara and everything on. This look really, really, it was like naturally bronze with this little bit of blue and that look made me absolutely fall in love with this palette. I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I do but I do. It is the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. Again, this is one of those that doesn't really make sense to me, Wild West. I mean, I kind of get it with, I don't know. I, I just, the, the name just, I don't know. This palette is beautiful. At first I was thinking, hmm, warm and blue, but it's really warm and teal. And then you have these gorgeous purpley, taupey undertone shadows in here. I remember getting a lot of comments, so I did two different looks. I did one dedicated look in a video, and then I did one in a get ready with me, and several people commented saying, I didn't even think that you could get a look like this out of this palette. It's more versatile than what you actually think just looking at it because you're so accustomed to seeing warm tones and blues, or again, this is teal, which I really like the teals in here. You're just so accustomed to seeing that that you kind of don't even really look at the other shades and the other possibilities, but I got a cool toned, just beautiful eye out of this that you really, if I showed you the eye look, you would not have pegged it for this palette. So I think it's more versatile than it actually looks like it is, and I, I really like it. I think it's one of the better naked palettes that have been put out. If you're interested in it, I don't think that you will be disappointed. And then my last favorite is something that I have on my eyes right now, paired with something from Becca. But this, this palette right here, I didn't know I needed this in my life, but now I know. <laughs> the Transition Palette from Dominique Cosmetics. This is an all matte palette, and when I looked at it online, it truly looked like it was all warm as well, like warm neutral, but still leaning warm, you know, kind of like the Biba palette, which I am gonna compare because I had several requests for that. I did post a picture, but I wanna actually point out some differences. This palette, when you see it in person, truly looks different than possibly even what it looks like on camera or in pictures. This row right here, this is a very rosy, it's like a pink. And then this shade right here is called blushing. It's like a pink with a little bit of orange in there. You have the purples. This shade right here, no matter how many times I take a picture of it, it just looks kind of orange or something, but it's not, it's um kind of like a mustardy yellow. And then I love the smoky tones down here and the pigments are beautiful. And the fact that you can use this on your face and it blends without the additional use of needing to, <laughs> I had someone mention, oh yeah, you can use shadows with, um, you know, dip into a shadow and then mix it with a powder and then you can blend and that. Absolutely, that works. And you can absolutely make just about any shadow work but this, you don't have to put in the work to make it work. It blends so beautifully. And then the pans are just a little bit bigger than the normal size so that you can get your face brushes in there. I'm just so happy with this. I love it. Again, I have it on right now. It's all of this here and underneath but also, again, a little bit of Becca Cosmetics. It's just a beautiful, beautiful palette, but let me show you right up against the Biba palette. Now, the differences for me are, this is far warmer. The tones in here are deeper, they're warmer, and then there's different textures. So even though you have a gray, I get why people think this looks similar. I get it. There's definitely shades in here that are similar, but like even this gray right here, this is a creamy matte. This is one of those that I call the marker shade. So it has a, a sheen to it. Now this one does not, right there. And then let me show you whew, that one. So they're not gonna be exact. For somebody who wants to have all mattes and you don't wanna have the shimmers or any type of sheen, this would be the one to get. And then let's see, I'm gonna compare this one to this one, you see this one is deeper. And then I'm gonna go for some of the orange. I'm gonna take buff, I'm gonna take blushing so you guys can see the difference there. Like this one is definitely more orange than this one. And then also hazelnut, it's 
see there. So they're similar, not the same. Spot also has texture to it. It's one of those creamy. So can you see that right there? Whereas this black is a true matte black. Can you see that sheen? And then this one doesn't have the sheen. And then if I was gonna take this shade and this shade, this one, again, it's deeper. This palette here tends to be a little bit deeper. And then I'm gonna take, let's take, I love this shade. I think it's Tor. No, it's Tusk. And Natural. You can see this one has a different undertone to it, and this one's brighter. So similar, I would say it's deeper and it's warmer, and then you have to also take into consideration that it has different textures in it, that it's not an all matte palette. Basically, these rosy, lighter shades, you're not getting up here either. Okay, that's enough. We will now get into my fails. And the first one, luckily, I was able to get a little sniff sniff of it before, but it was a fail because I wanted a new fragrance. I wanted a new fragrance and <laughs> Puffin says something funny to me. I had several samples sent to me in the mail and I was testing all of these out and he's like uh, uh. He's like you are not allowed to wear anything but Tom Ford. I was like, okay, sir <laughs> It was funny. He was just you know messing around, but I you know, there's a new Tom Ford fragrance tuberose new and um, I put this on and I, I couldn't handle it I waited for it to dry down. I think people are going to have either a love or absolute hate. This for me, this fragrance is not me. If you tend to like fragrances that I like, you're not gonna like this. It is overwhelming. It has a slight like floral, but like, I don't know. I've never had such a strong reaction to a fragrance in my life. I can't with sending my friend the little vomit emojis. I was like, get it off. I've got to get it off. I was waiting and waiting and waiting for it to, I was like, no, I can't. And then I lit a candle. I actually, it's right here. It's right here. I used my Tom Ford Lost Cherry candle because I was sitting here and I was doing my makeup and I was like, I can't handle this. I, I cannot handle this on my skin. Like it, it was terrible. It was terrible. I was getting the Dawn dish soap, all the different soaps I could possibly get to get the fragrance off, and then it was still in the air, so I'm burning my candle. I'm trying everything to get this just gone. So that is one huge fail for me. Luckily, I didn't spend my money on it, but I didn't like it, and my experience with it was enough for me to call it a fail. <laughs> and then my last fail is this right here from Mark Jacobs. And it's not just because it broke my skin out to high heavens. Okay, so if you missed my updates, let me update you really quickly. I said in my comment section of my video for this, the get ready with me, it's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I only had three little dots. Woo, the next day, everywhere. And I had them underneath the skin. It wasn't even just those like, oh, I call them the retin-a away. Those don't really bother me that much because it's they're gone really easily. No, this got underneath my skin. It, oh, it caused a ton of texture on my skin and I didn't like it to begin with. It wasn't even like, oh, I really like this. Oh man, it breaks me out, I'm not gonna use it. This looked terrible on me. Some of you guys could tell on camera and some of you guys couldn't. Let me just tell you that when you're using something that's more matte, it looks better on camera because you have the lights and it absorbs the light rather than reflecting back any texture. And sometimes some of my favorite foundations I won't even wear on camera because they're a little bit more luminous and will make my skin look worse than it actually does on camera. It's very strange. But this looked so dry and it just felt dry. I was not feeling it. At first I thought it looked good and then it was just, it kept going downhill. I did like it underneath my eyes, but on my face, it was so weird. I had a pimple here and a pimple here in the exact same spot on both eyes. Mm -mm. This is the Marc Jacobs Extra Shot Foundation and Concealer in One. Just nope, nip, 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 mm -mm, not doing it. We're gonna let that one go. 
<laughs> Anywho, beauties, I hope you guys enjoyed my favorites and fails for the month of February. Let me know below what are some things that you loved this month and some things maybe that you just didn't get along with. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.